How do you know you're saved? The Calvinistic answer. I didn't say Calvin, so don't blame this on Calvin. Calvin's a good guy. He never wrote these things. You know, if Calvin was alive today, he would probably have a bumper sticker that says, God, save me from my followers. I'm sure he would. Uh, because their followers came up with this idea. It's a crazy idea. It explains a lot about America. Whom God has chosen, he prospers. So we now know who the elect are. Because they're the people who get rich. The evidence that you're chosen by God is that you're rich. America, America. God shed his grace on thee. Look how wealthy America is. Do we need any better evidence that God has chosen to bless this country? Let me imitate Jerry Falwell or Pat Robertson. And as this country turns away from God, we can expect that the economic prosperity that we have known will disappear. This nation is doomed to, to, to economic privation unless people repent and turn to the Lord. Then the Lord will prosper this nation. Then the Lord will bless this nation. This is the kind of crap I hear on television all the time. It's absolutely absurd. You see, those of you who come from other countries have to learn something about the United States. And that is that in America we are so imbued with that Calvinistic ideology that it's not just inconvenient to be poor and a poor set of circumstances. It's to have a moral judgment placed upon you if you're poor. If you're poor, you're obviously not one of God's chosen people. If you're poor, you are obviously not in right relationship with God. You say, where did they come up with this crazy idea? It's all through the Old Testament, people. Every time Israel is right with God, what happens to Israel? It prospers. Every time Israel gets out of right relationship with God, what happens? Famine, pestilence, they get carried off into captivity, they lose wars. Do they not? Depending on whether or not Israel wins a war or loses a war, has everything to do with how well they're getting along with God at that given time. Agreed? that one's economic, social prosperity and well-being is totally dependent on one's relationship with God. So they got it. It's an old, if you go through the sermons of the early Puritan fathers, you will find that they are all on Old Testament passages. Because that's the God that they worship. The Old Testament God who prospers. The Jesus of the New Testament doesn't really promise you prosperity. And incidentally, those of you from Africa, Every time I'm in Africa, I realize how Americanized your Christianity is becoming. Because I'm hearing the same theology being propagated in churches all over Africa and all over Asia. And they bring over American evangelists who promise that if you make Jesus your choice, you'll drive a Rolls Royce. You know, and here's Jesus who says, the foxes have holes, the birds have nests, you follow me, you probably won't end up with a place to lay your head. Does he not say that? Where does Jesus ever promise economic prosperity? Where does he, Jesus says, if any man would be my disciple, you know what he has to be prepared to do? Not get rich. Better be prepared to take up his cross and follow me. The servant is not greater than the master. Isn't that what Jesus says? Look what they did to me, that's what they'll do to you if you follow me. Isn't that his message? You can hardly hear that in American Christianity today. You hear, it, and it's being exported all over the world. But it has a very positive role to play economically. You believe God has chosen you, the evidence of prosperity being chosen is that you prosper. This is completely opposite of Catholicism. In Catholicism, the evidence of a spiritual man is that he's poor. St. Francis gets a lot of money, and what does he do with it? Gives it all away. If you're going to become a priest and really become spiritual, you have to take the vow of poverty. No, Catholicism honors the poor. Protestantism honors the rich. You begin to see what we're dealing with here. It's an ideological difference. Protestants praise rich people. As a matter of fact, the best way to become a deacon in the church is to get rich. <laughs> the wealthier you are, the more likely it is that people in the church will deem you to be a spiritual, godly person. That's horrible to think about. But just stand back sociologically and look at the situation and you'll find that it's true. So you've got this very positive value judgment on the accumulation of wealth. 